as you know, there's five to seven head coaching jobs that are available every year. We have Washington and Carolina already. Yep. Dallas, yep. New York Giants, probable. Jacksonville, Detroit, uh, possible. Right? So when you look at the list right. of potential head coaches out there, I believe Ron Rivera is going to land somewhere. I think Mike McCarthy, after a year off not landing a job last year, uh, will probably be a head yeah. coach somewhere. But beyond that, you have Matt Rule in college. You have David Shaw from Stanford, who's a hot candidate every single year. And I believe Shaw is going to wait for the absolute perfect situation, not just with the team, but but in life, because he realizes that he, he has right. a, a great situation in Palo Alto. And when he does leave, he could be fired after four years in the NFL. So he wants to make sure he's done everything uh, at the college level he possibly can. But what about other guys like Robert Sa- uh, Sala or or? Greg Roman. I, yeah. I feel like you don't hear Greg Roman's name enough for what he's yeah. accomplished with Lamar. Impressive. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would actually like. I would point to both the coordinators in in Baltimore. Like Wing Martindale has done a great job on defense, and they weren't very good at the beginning of the year, not up to the standard at least. And he's done a great job of helping evolve it. So I think both the coordinators in Baltimore. Um, Greg Roman and, and, and Wink Martindale deserve a look. I, I also think the teams that have openings this year. I think you'll see them sort of like broadening the search a little bit. And, and the reason why, Dan, I, like everybody's been fishing off the same pier for a while. You know what I mean? Like everybody's yeah. been looking for like the hot, young, offensive mind. And so, you know, I think that if you're looking for that, the ranks have been depleted to some degree. And so I, I do think that you're going to see some teams saying, okay, well, we got to look elsewhere. And so I think that does offer open opportunity for defensive guys. You mentioned Robert Sala. Dennis Allen in New Orleans has done a fantastic job. He could be in line for a second shot. I, I mentioned Wink Martindale, Chris Richard in Dallas. Um, you know, and then the college coaches, I think, um, are going to get a look. And, and one thing that's sort of interesting here, I, I think Cliff Kingsbury, just by putting together a competent NFL operation in year one, where a lot of people were sort of waiting for him to fail, um, they haven't been bad at all. You know, like it, it, now the record's not good, but they've been competitive week to week. Right. And it looks like Cliff has an idea of what he's doing. Um, I, you know, I think that there are going to be this. This could be the year where you see more teams trying to go and get guys out of the college level. So you mentioned uh, Matt Rule. I think he's going to be in demand. I know teams that have openings, even a couple that don't yet, have already sort of put feelers out to him. Lincoln Riley, I think, is sort of the NFL's white whale. Um, but beyond those guys, you know, there are more. You know, guys like Matt Campbell at Iowa State, like guys that are real program builders. Uh, you know, people are going to call Ohio State about Ryan Day. I don't think he leaves, but I think that he will get interest. Uh, you know, it's just I, I think that there is a feeling now that you know these teams have to look elsewhere after tapping that you know that well of, of young offensive coaches for so long. And so I think that that could work to the benefit of both defensive coaches in the NFL and you know, these guys who have reputations as program builders at the college level. PJ Flex not going to be rowing his boat in the NFL, right? Does that does that act work in the <laughs> I'll league? I'll tell you what. I, I I'll tell you what. Like I've had so many people tell me that wouldn't work that I that I that I want to see if it would. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. I've had so many people say to me, "Oh, that 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 hokey stuff wouldn't work in the NFL." I like like I, you know what? Like I like because so many people have said it wouldn't work. I, I actually wouldn't mind giving it a look. Well, I always feel like with him, it, it takes you a minute to buy in. Can you imagine him walking into a team room and you're a player and you know this how animated he is and it, it's he's the yeah. he's the CEO of a of a big company that that is paid to come there in there and give pep talks and it, it's obviously worked at, at Minnesota. It's been a yeah. good season for them. I, I mean, hey, he's won multiple places, and I and I will say this too. I mean, a lot of this is about reaching the younger generation and keeping them engaged and. Um, you know, look, he's really proven to be able to do that with 18 to 22 year olds. I understand you're dealing with grown men and everything else, but I, you know, look, like I, to me, like, and, and you've been around the league a long time, Dan, this is like, all this stuff is results driven. And so if you give guys a chance to succeed as a team and succeed individually, which ultimately gives them a chance to make a lot of money, they're going to listen to you, you know? And so, um, all these, all these, like the, all these guys come in sort of different packages. Um, if PJ Flack could come into a place and win quickly, I I don't know why it wouldn't work. It's just it's all boils down to that whether or not 
Um, and he can give the guys the answers to the class. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.